So Eddie Hearn just got done doing an interview with Fight Hype. And it's funny because I just got done making a video not too long ago. And I talked about how these heavyweight champions are not taking the opportunity which is presented in front of them. How they're too worried about money and not worried about the object at hand. And that's number one, building a good legacy, having something that somebody remembers. And while also getting paid in the process. But they seem to be complaining and trying to get paid off of taking the opportunity rather than just seizing the opportunity. And here, not even about 15 minutes later, um, Fight Heart releases a video with Eddie Hearn where he talks about the exact same things that I said about these heavyweight champions not taking up on the opportunity. And also, he goes to mention the exact same thing. I said about these heavyweights making more money and being in a better position because Anthony Joshua exists in the heavyweight division. I'm going to play a couple of clips of the video and the rest of you guys can go on Fight Hype to watch. I will leave the link in the description box. One thing you've got to understand about boxing is people say a lot of things. When you say, I'll come to you can fight Kilbrook, the asterisk is missing for a shitload of money that is probably unrealistic. That's the bit that's missing. And same with most people who talk about a Joshua fight. I'll fight Joshua, no problem. Hmm? No problem. Okay, here's the offer, that's a disgusting offer. You know what I mean? So, well, you wanna fight for four heavyweight world championship belts? You know, when AJ boxed Charles Martin, he got peanuts. Because he could become world heavyweight champion. He believed he was gonna win the fight, look at him now. So, it's, you've gotta get the right deal. I don't, I don't think I'm saying you've got to take whatever you're offered, but you've got to put a value on winning things. Let me reiterate what Eddie Hearn said, because he said something that was very valuable and very true. you got to put a value on winning things. Now, at first, Deontay Wilder, at least from the public perception, he put hella value on being one face, one name, one champion, Deontay Wilder. He put hella value on unifying the division. He put hella value on the best fighting the best. Yet we're getting everything but the opposite of what he's talking about. Okay, let's keep going. But for a lot of people, particularly with the AJ fight, it's 90% about the money and 10% about winning four heavyweight world championship belts. It seems like you know, Wilder particularly doesn't put any value at all on becoming an undisputed champion, which is disappointing for a guy that spent his whole career going... One face, one name, one champion, but really doesn't want to do it. Really doesn't want to do it. You know? So, boxing can be a frustrating sport, <clears throat> not just for fans, but for promoters. Because we're the ones who you presume are fucking it all up. <laughs> so you know? Really you. Now, oh where, oh where are my great American ex heavyweight champions that thought that they was the godfather that resided over boxing and trying to tell the world how Anthony Joshua or Eddie Hearn are messing up boxing and how everybody should be taking the opportunity to fight a champion and nobody should be sitting on their ass. They sit here and have a meeting, damn near, they have a fucking powwow about this at the Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury match. Now all of a sudden, they're extending every olive branch leaf in the county. Okay, and all of a sudden, do you hear anything from those ex-champions? Do you hear anything from Evander Holyfield? Do you hear anything from Lennox Lewis? Do you hear anything from these guys? Nothing. But yet, they thought it was important enough to sit down and have a meeting in the middle of Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder fight to basically say how Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua is messing up boxing and how them not accepting a fight just to accept the fight out of sure competition because it's good for the sport is wrong. Well, where are you guys at now? Anyways, I'll digress. Keep going. But it's really frustrating, particularly you know, the more I think about Deontay Wilder, just how... I think AJ's biggest mistake is that he's not really 24-7 on Instagram talking about what he's doing. And, and by the way, it's a much better life doing what he's doing. It's classier. But when you're there going, he's ducking me, I'm ducking like, In the end, the fans go, yeah, yeah. It's like, well, let's talk about facts. You know, you sent a, an offer, 50 million. We asked for a contract, you wouldn't send one. Right? I asked for a meeting to discuss that offer, you wouldn't accept one. That's old news, right? If you don't believe me on that, that, they're the facts. No one's denying those facts, okay? 
This new one, you fight Fury, good fight, well done. Your stock's gone up, we make you a big percentage off, offer split. Two fights, one in the UK, one in the US, whatever happens, you could get knocked out in the first round. Still fight you again in America. You ignore my emails and contact. Like, he's so frustrating. Her and you don't want to, mate, what? tell me what I should be doing to make this fight, you know? Because they, like I say, there seems to be no value on becoming undisputed champion. That's because it's very simple. He lied. He never cared about becoming an undisputed champion. He never cared about the level of opponents that he had faced. Hence, that's why his career turned out the way it is. Let's be honest. Even if you're a cherry picker, nobody has a record like Deontay Wilder. Nobody is crazy enough to think that they can get away with fighting that many bums and not raise an eyebrow. Nobody has had the audacity or the balls to attempt to have a resume like that, especially in the heavyweight division, and think you're going to constantly fool the people and they're going to forever be behooved by this facade of I'm the baddest man on the planet, this, this, that, and the third, simply because you enter into boxing when it is at its weakest climate that anybody have seen in years and years. Okay, that's just the truth. Okay, you've got able to get on on the people, but all somebody's asking you to do is could you step up a little bit, just a little bit. I mean, you are holding the belt that Muhammad Ali wilted around his own waist himself. I mean, you do owe the American public, you do owe American boxing reputation to at least be able to go out here and represent us half decent. We at least deserve that. And that's always been my thing with Deontay Wilder, and people never get it. People say, you hate on Deontay Wilder, you hate him. Man, how are you? Listen, I'm going to put it like this. If I let you in my home, and you step into my home, and you don't take your shoes off, and you track mud all through my house, okay? You go in my refrigerator, you drop food on the floor, you are not respecting my house. Why would I respect somebody who has no respect for my home? So when Deontay Wilder stepped his ass up into boxing, he has shown no respect. He is walking around my goddamn alpaca rug with his shoes on, stomping through mud, leaving cigarette butts on my table, not cleaning out the trash, not flushing the toilet, writing on my walls. He's doing all kind of stuff to my house, and I'm supposed to respect this guy in the process. No. He's put that work in. Us as a team to get to that level. So again, we're making offers that I don't think we should be. I'm not comfortable with how good the offers are. A lot of them. And some are going to be improved. Some are staying where they are. But why are these fighters making this kind of money? Why? Because of Anthony Joshua. You know what I mean? Why is Wilder Fury so... Why was that the size that it was? Because of Anthony Joshua. You think, oh, shut up, Hearn. Because of Anthony Joshua. The whole fight was built off Joshua's running scared. Oh, that's the guy Joshua's running scared from, right? Why are the fighters making so much money to fight Anthony Joshua? Because of Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua is not boxing in a 5,000 arena for four or five million, and then when he fights you, it becomes 30. He's getting that anyway. So he's built that, he's making that money. We don't wanna just have defenses. We wanna have mega fights. So we're offering you that kind of money to try and entice you to take the fight. Again, I'm not comfortable with it, but it's what we've got to do to try and get them. Now, you guys just heard me say it in my last video. Literally, I just said these heavyweights are in a better position because Anthony Joshua exists within the heavyweight realm. Period. Period. And let me reiterate another thing that Eddie said, because he said a lot of good things in this interview. He said, look, man. Whether he fights Tyson Fury or Joe Glass, he's getting 30 and 20 million regardless. He's not getting paid more because he picks you. Okay? He's going to get paid that no matter who he picks. So when he picks somebody of a higher caliber that's clearly saying he cares about his reputation, he cares about his boxing record, he cares about how he's remembered, and he's going for the undisputed, and he wants to achieve something more in boxing than just a payday, even though they're about their money, but you should be, because this is the flesh game. That's what he's saying. He'll get paid that either way. To me, that's one of the biggest nails in the coffin right there. That's all that you got to say. Talking about 
if he didn't want to fight this fighter, and if he's ducking that fighter, if Anthony Joshua is all about the money, then Anthony Joshua at this point in his career can clearly did, can clearly do, I mean, what Deontay Wilder has done with his career. Anthony Joshua can literally fight bums from here on out. And you know what? He won't have too much of a resistance. He will still be loved. Yes, there will some who will criticize him, but it will not outweigh the love that he will get just in general for what he's done with the sport, just making it entertaining and just making the sport money. Okay, just making the sport money. He is the face of the sport. You got Canelo Alvarez and Anthony Joshua. The man is the face of the sport. They always trust people like that because Anthony Joshua represents money. Period. He's going to get paid that either way. So what are you talking about? And Eddie Hearn said, and you know what? I'm with Eddie. I'm not comfortable with the money that you offer in these people because I'm flat out pissed. I feel like I missed my damn boat. Shit. If I was about five or six years younger, I, I, I would go ahead and throw my hat down in this. Fuck this. Because there's too much free money floating around. And all, and all I got to do is step up and take a fight? Man, you guys are crazy. One night of fighting for that, for that kind of money, I'm not dodging nobody. I'm not dodging. And you know what? I would be so scoped to fight for that kind of money, I'll fuck around and win. Straight up. I'll fuck around and knock Anthony Joshua out. I know I knocked Deontay Wilder out. That ain't even a question. But I'll fuck around and knock uh, Anthony Joshua straight the fuck out. Period. And help him back to his feet and shake his hand, then kiss his feet. Straight up. That's how I feel about it. But anyways, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Bruce Van, I'm out. But when they won't even reply, what do the fans say then? So when the fans say, Hearn, you're talking about... You don't want to fight. I'm like, well, how comes I keep increasing my offer and they don't even reply to me?